Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a survival horror game in Unity and welcome to episode 20. So this tutorial we're going to take a break from what we've designed so far but we're not going to stray too far from it because we're going to look at creating a main menu. Don't forget, click the subscribe button, click the bell icon as well, stay up to date with every tutorial in this series and everything else on my channel. And if you've enjoyed what you've seen so far, please feel free to check out my Patreon where you'll get things like early access, exclusive content, project files and so much more. With that in mind, let's get to work. So the idea of a main menu stems from the fact that we need to create a new scene and we've dealt with new scenes before so it's not going to be too difficult. So obviously file new scene and we're ready to go now the assets i'm going to import in this tutorial you may have already seen in one of the unity shorts that i um released um i think it was, it was earlier this year it was a couple of months ago i think um but yeah if you've seen it you know you'll already know them so we're going to create a quick little scene and we're also going to create some of that ui so we're going to be dealing with buttons and things like that in this tutorial so firstly, let's go to our textures folder and let's bring in a couple of textures that we're going to deal with to make our main menu look a little bit more appropriate for what we're designing here. So I'm just going to bring in three textures. And you can get these on our website, downloads and assets, and they're right there. So we've got this full eye, uh, we've got the tile floor, and we've also got this wallpaper. And as I said, if you've seen that Unity short, you'll recognize all three of those. If not, um, Check out my channel, you'll be able to find the Unity short there, it's kind of cool. So to do this, let us start with just a cube, let's set up the scene. So I've put uh, the cube dead center and we'll make this just the floor. So let's expand this to probably five by five by five. Uh, in fact, we'll keep the Y as one. Let's drag and drop the tile onto there. And let's also change that into a normal map as well. So hold control, press D. And texture type, normal map, grayscale, and apply. So, we, you know, we've already dealt with a lot of this. So I'm not going to spend too much time telling you what you need to do here because we already know what we're doing. Uh, let's change that to albedo alpha. And take the normal map down here to 0 0.5. And we'll see how that looks in our camera. So let's take our camera. And let's bring it into position. So the idea is I want us to have like a bit of a wall thing going on here with our main menu down the side. So if I bring this to about here and probably zoom in just a touch more, <clears throat> excuse me. And next thing, let's take uh, this cube, right click, rename, and let's have it floor 001. Hold control, press D, and let's shift it into place about here. And I'm going to increase the scale on the Y to probably around maybe six. So it's a little bit taller. And let's bring it into position about there. And then let's drag and drop that wallpaper onto there. I'm going to rename, call this wall 001. And let me see, let's do a normal map on this as well. So hold control, press D on the wallpaper texture and change to normal map. Grayscale, apply, and we'll do the same. We'll apply that normal map straight there. Let's change it to 0 0.5 and albedo alpha. And we'll see how that looks in just a second, but I may, uh, in fact, we'll keep it as it is. I'm gonna hold control, press D to duplicate this way. Hold control, D, duplicate that way. Same with the floor, take it that way. And this one that way. So now, we should hopefully, when we press play, have a reasonable scene that we can deal with. Yep, we do. Uh, I may zoom the camera in just a little more. But what we may do as well, just to be safe, is if I take these two right here, hold control, press D, move them along, and then just shift the camera along a tiny little bit. So now, hopefully, we should be able to see how this takes place. Uh, what we'll do now is we'll attach the um, eye to the scene and I'm going to add a little bit of animation to this. So if I press play, I want to show you what I intend to do. So down the side here, I want uh, our options to be available. So new game, load game, credits, whatever. And over here, I want the eye 
just kind of looking around the room, looking a little bit shifty from time to time. So to do that, we're going to go game object, 3D object, and sphere. And I'm going to bring this sphere into the wall, probably round about there, and increase the size to 2 by 2 by 2. Next, I'm going to drag and drop this full eye texture onto our sphere over here. So it looks like we have to rotate our eye by 90 degrees on the Y. So let's change that to 90. Looks a little bit freaky. Quite happy with how that looks. It's a bit odd. Uh, next, let's right click and rename this eye. So rename. <clears throat> let's have that as full eye. <clears throat> Oh gosh, my throat today, guys. So, what do we do next? Well, let's create a quick little animation for this little eye. So let's click on our animations folder. Click animation, click on create. Let's have this as menu eye. So for those of you who are quite sharp-eyed, you may have realized at this point that I already have a story and idea in place for where I want this tutorial series to go. And to be honest, the way it's going, I may develop it this into an entire game because I kind of have some cool ideas. So we'll see how far we get with the series because I don't think we're even a quarter of the way through because there is a heck of a lot to learn in this one. So let's animate this eye quickly. So let's have it look to the left, then to the right, down a bit, and then back to center. So we've dealt with animation before, so let's quickly gloss over. Let's press record, and on our first keyframe, which is zero. We want the rotation to be zero. So let's do one and reset to zero. Then let's retype 90. And then let's type one and zero. So now we have the keyframe of the rotation set as zero, 90, zero. So that's dead center. Next thing, let's have by one second, the eye looks this way and down just a little bit so let's have about there so then after another let's say two seconds he looks across so 60 and 120 makes 180 so by the 180th frame we want our eye to be looking over this way and then after another second so that'll make it 240 Let's have our eye looking center and center and maybe maybe about there. And after another second, so let's say 300, let's have it looking over here and up slightly. And let's say after another two seconds of that, it's back center. So 420. Let's have that back as 90 and 0. And let's stop. And let's press play and let's see how that eye reacts. Okay. So it's up to you what you want to do with that. This is just a little something I'm adding in for a bit of extra effect with the uh, menu itself. So let's actually get into creating these, these menu options now. So let's go to game object, let's go to UI, and let's go to button right there. So we've dealt a little bit with canvas before, we understand what's going on, but we've never dealt with a button per se. So it works the same way, we can anchor it over on the right, and then let's zero out its position, and then we can set it in place of where it should be. So I'm going to use the rec tool right here, and I'm going to bring this one up to about there. And then I'm going to expand it to be quite a bit bigger. Let's probably bring it to around about there. And I'm going to change the text on it to say, just new game. And I'm actually going to change the color to white and increase the font size to something quite big to kind of fill this area and let's have that font size as maybe 36 that should do so we can barely see it in the button now the great thing about a button is we can actually change its different states so its normal color which is what we see now is currently set as 
well, it appears to be like a bit of a grey colour. However, I'm going to set the alpha as zero, so we can see straight through that button. So the highlighted colour is basically whenever the mouse goes over it. So in this case, if we were to have the highlighted colour as jet black, and press play, whenever the mouse goes over, new game, it would highlight like so. And I guess it's up to you what you want to do with a highlighted colour. There's no set way. It's It really is entirely up to you. You could have the alpha quite low, let's say 45. So you would have it kind of a greyish. But you can see that there. So I'm going to have, probably have my alpha about 45. Press colour is when we actually click the button. So just to show you again, if we go on it and press it, it will change to this press colour. There we go, you can see. So I'm going to have the pressed colour as, in fact, you know what, I'm going to have the highlighter colour as a red kind of colour and the pressed colour as a deeper red kind of colour. I feel red probably fits this uh, series a little bit more. So hopefully we should have something which looks a little bit, okay, I might change the alpha on the pressed a little bit. There we go. So let's right click and rename. And let's call this new button. So what other buttons do we have? Well, we have load game, don't we? So we'll prepare for the future here because obviously we don't have any functions to load or save at the moment, but we will be getting them pretty soon. So I'm going to prepare for when we do, and I'm going to hold control, press D. And then I'm going to drag this down to about there. And F2, rename, load, button. So that means that if we go below there into the text and change this to say load game. Uh, next we could have hold control press D and let's have this as options. So let's name it as option button and then we just need to rename that to say options. And next one, hold control, press D, and let's have this as credits, I guess. So credit button. And let's change the text on that one to say credits. And let's have another one, which is just quit. So quit button. And we'll have this one say exit game. And then we just need to drag that button down. Let's have it a little bit further down than the others. And let's press play and let's see how that looks. So you can see how this menu is coming together. Keep in mind it is a little bit you know, illegible at the moment. It doesn't look as fancy as what our other scene does. However, things will all come into place soon enough. So the idea of what we've got for a menu here is coming together. And I'm actually going to save that scene now. And I'm going to save that as main menu and save. Um, what we do need to do is we may need to readjust our scenes. Uh, we'll probably do that in the next tutorial because the idea of what we're doing is going to kind of like flow from one scene to the next. But for now, I'm going to go to file build settings and click on add open scene. So we have three scenes now. We have the main menu, the game over and the scene one, which is our game. So what I would do now is it's up to you how you guys want your main menu to look. Admittedly, yes, this is not the fanciest looking main menu of all time. There's obviously better main menus out there. However, it is your game, you can design it however you want. And I've said it in different tutorials before, but what the camera never sees doesn't tend to matter. Because in the case of this, here, the texture obviously has gone squished, it doesn't look right, but the camera will never see that. So you don't need to worry about it too much. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to take this main menu and we're gonna make it look a whole lot better. We're going to make the buttons work and we're also going to create a splash screen. So that is what I mean by flowing the game together. So the scenes will flow. So we'll start with the splash screen. That will go to this main menu and then we'll be able to start our game. So from there, we're also going to start creating cutscenes. 
and uh, like a start scene with a story and from there we're going to really build up our game. So like I say, next tutorial we're going to make all of this look way better. It's going to look a little bit more like how you saw the uh, Unity Shore that I did. So guys, until that next tutorial, thank you very much for watching.